Look, is it been two months already? Ooh. Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. Sorry it's been a while, I was busy and work and new job and life happened. So anyway, that's what happened. So, but I'm back, I'm gonna try and be more consistent. For this video, I'm gonna be drawing a dragon. And just to let you know, I'm not, I've never really drawn any dragons and officially studied them since high school. And that was literally once or twice off the top of my head. Um, but for this one, I decided I was going to go ahead and just do a whole full-on reference. I started with looking up different references, different poses, doing an actual character study of a dragon. And I'm actually pretty proud of how the study, character study turned out. And the dragons looked pretty cool. Um, however, I realized after I was said and done with everything, when I finished the dragon, I was going back through the footage and I realized actual dragon in the end doesn't have wings. I was so disappointed in myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I ever got the wings. So I'm going to try and maybe the next video redraw or later on down the road redraw the dragon. So for now, I'm guessing this dragon that I draw ends up being eastern western combo. I don't know. Someone told me it looked like a horse. Oh <laughs> well, whatever. Um, but I do recommend going over and doing a full-on character study. If you're drawing something you don't really know how to draw or aren't familiar with drawing, go ahead and do a character study and draw out and practice different forms and poses in the anatomy of animal, whatever you're drawing, so you can get the hang of it before you start drawing it. So I used my two handy-dandy um, woodless uh, general graphite pencils, and I started drawing out the basic dragon um, I kind of wanted it to be in a, like a more prowling, um, getting ready to pounce um, kind of pose. Like it was like, oh, coming out of its cave. And it realized that someone's looking at watching him. And so he has a fireball getting ready to fire at you. I actually tried to pay a little bit more attention to backgrounds this time because I oftentimes don't actually pay much attention to them. And so that might have been also the reason I forgot to put the wings. So yeah, I'm actually going over with Micron um, Micron pans, Pigma Micron, not crayons. I mean um, marker. Ugh, I can't, I can't speak pens. The one I used predominantly throughout this whole video was the Pigma Graphic One. Um, I really like how it works. They actually call this one the Graphic, and it's the number one. Um, I actually really like how it turned out, and I really like using that marker because it's good for general pen. Okay, so here's the coloring portion. Um, I stuck with a more kind of like brownish tones, and that's how I kind of came up with the idea of him being in the forest. Because I originally didn't quite know what colors I was going to make him, which is what I recommend you actually go into a drawing, especially with a dragon. No, or any animal that is, is make-believe or can be different designs to based off their um, environment. You come up with a story beforehand. I didn't really do this for this one and I kind of regret not doing it. And so it kind of gives you an idea of like, okay, if they're going to be in a more foresty atmosphere, my dragon might have more camouflage to it. So it would be brown or greens and unless it has some camouflage ability. But I kind of stuck with a more woodsy brown kind of dragon and I gave him like these black beady eyes. I love how their eyes turned out in the end. Um, but I like how it turned out and to also like consider um, what the environment's going to be like that it lives in. For this one it's going to be living in the woods and when I draw the next dragon I'll probably do a different environment. Um, that's my little color tablet I, um, that tells me how many Copic markers I have. I always keep it handy so I can look, okay, this is the color I want to use. Do I have a color lighter or darker that I can use as shading or highlighting? I always try to keep that in mind whenever I'm using my Copic markers because they're very nice. They can blend very easily. However, if you have dark colors that are too far apart from each other, it won't blend as well, which is something you always want to be mindful of so I always keep a piece of scratch paper off to the side so I'm able to blend and test and see how the colors blend together 
and so I'm working on the background here and I wanted to make foliage coming down from the cave and you can see I started off trying to do it off to the side but it didn't end up working so later on you'll see that I take the green different shades of green and lighter greens to bring out and lift the color up off of the black since green is not going to show up on top of black but if you go over an area enough color will pick up and you'll be able to basically um, pick up any color that you didn't want there like it's kind of like the same thing when you, you go outside the lines of like say you have black copic you have an outline and you go outside the line with the green pen you can take a colorless blender and if you go over that spot enough it'll go away so here's the finishing product I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video I really like how it turned out I hope you guys stick around I'm gonna try and get back in the habit of making videos again I'm sorry for my two month absence please click like and subscribe I have an Instagram account now so go ahead and I try to update daily so go ahead give a like thumbs up subscribe I'll see you guys later